guest is a very beautiful woman who happens to be the professor of Egyptology at UCLA. Her latest book, The Woman Who Would Be King, is in stores now. Oh, I know. <laughs> The woman who would be King Craig, what's this about? Well, you'll find out when you meet Dr. Cara Cooney, everybody. <laughs> You look great, girl. Oh, thank you so much. It's you, great to be back. It's lovely to see you. You yeah. haven't been here in such a long time. Like three years? It seems like an era of Egyptian kings. And we talked about the revolution last time, so a lot's changed. What, what revolution? Egyptian revolution. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, yeah. That was that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's calm. Yeah, yeah. Have you been back since? Uh, no, no, but I'm going in March. Oh, you going are? Going in March. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Work in the Cairo Museum. It'll be good. Yeah, well, you'll be all right. You know what you're doing. Yeah, you know you know your way around oh, there. You know the and also you're with the you're pretty much with dead people most of the time anyway, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm bringing my son. I'm bringing my husband. I'm bringing the whole family, and <gasps> we'll work in the Cairo Museum, coffins and and dead people. The whole yeah, time. Well, yeah, and there they've been dead for a very long time. Though they're just yeah. dusty. They're like Jeff. <laughs> Some of my best friends live over there, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I started the book. I'm about, I'd say, hey, 20. 15? Huh? What? 15? No, no, no. I'm a little further in than that. Good. It's, you're going to get flack for this mm -hmm. because uh, you're a scientist. You know, you're an academic. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I teach at UCLA. I have graduate students, very serious work. I go to faculty meetings. Yeah. And my work in the Cairo Museum is is very thorough, detailed. I make a contribution to the field. Yes, right? I know you do. I know. And this, I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to write something sexy and it's human sec yeah, and emotional. Is. I know. And follow someone from cradle to grave and track her life and her decision making the whole way through. But so, a real person, of course. Pronounce her name properly. Hatshepsut. 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 Yes. But the fact that we can't pronounce her name is what it's all about. Because I have to resurrect this poor woman. I have to. I have to bring her back from the dead because we've all forgotten about her. Well, uh, uh, to be fair, the Egyptians forgot about her first. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They, they, they had her chiseled out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the reliefs and the stones and how all of her statues smashed and all of that. Now, is but this... she's, I mean, she's, she's, she's a badass. Why did they have she's her... She's my badass. I mean, yeah, she, I just, no, she's much her. more Cleopatra than Cleopatra is depicted, don't you think? No, I mean... I mean, Cleopatra, how did she... She bought her way through sex to two Roman generals. Right. She breeded children to create a dynasty in the Eastern Mediterranean. This woman couldn't do any of that. She actually denied her sex, turned herself into a man. Like Elizabeth I, nearly. In a yeah. way. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's doing everything right. She's matching herself to the system as much as she can. But because her success was so great, it was that much easier for the men after her to take credit. Does that make sense? The no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But I mean, well, but let's let's be clear. I mean, it's not easy for women today to find political power, right? Mm, okay. <laughs> no, of course not. Right? I okay. Know. So female president, Congress, all of these. I mean, female president is possible, but yes, it's, it's yes. not something that's generally. Given. Do you think we're a bit behind the curve with that in America? It seems to me like we've had a lot of females running countries in other uh, uh, other countries in the West, but America. Not yet. I, it's humans. It's everybody. It's really? just the human race. It's the way we work. But that's part of why I wrote this, because I wanted to know why it's harder for women to, to gain those pinnacles of why power. Is it, why is it harder for women oh. to gain pinnacles of power? Okay, well, I talked about this backstage with a couple of people. And if I'm going to encapsulate it. Okay. It's very, very... Okay. So men have, like, a testosterone ambition. And females have an oxytocin ambition. So my ambition is to keep my family safe. It's to protect my, my child, my husband, whatever. You, you're going off out into the world and you're making connections and, and you're, you're, you're thinking broader. So then I bring it back to Hillary Clinton and what she once said, that a woman, if she has pictures of her family in her office, people look at that and they say, oh, is she doing her job? Does she care about, you know, is she just spending all of her time on her family or is she actually doing her job? And what's the name of the woman who was the CEO of Yahoo? Oh, when yeah, she I had the baby yeah, yeah, and everyone yeah. freaked out because she had a baby. Yeah. And if a man had a wife with a baby, I mean, no one would have said a thing. He's got right. a baby at home. Okay, that's fine. But a man is, is able to, oh, and it goes with the microloan thing, right? So they Explain. Okay, so the microloans, they don't give them out to men. Because if a man gets a microloan, he takes his 50 bucks or 500 bucks and he goes to a bar and he builds social capital. He makes networks and he buys drinks for all the guys. Right. A woman gets her 50 bucks and she buys the cow and she makes cheese, and she makes the business, and she takes care of her family. Wait, where is this going So, 
in places where they give out microloans. Okay. But so, a woman is always going to be looking inward, and a man, not always, because there's gradients, but a woman will be looking inward, and a man will be looking outward, and so it's just harder for a woman to, to gain power. Now, all of these things are surmountable. All of these things can be transcended, but I think it's better to know about it. Is that not, not. Is, does it not exist in that way because traditionally men built the system? So therefore, if the system, you, you alter the system... You have a womb, you have breasts, you have to nurse. Do you I, have to I know where they are, that? but I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying if you change the system, then surely it becomes easier, right? It, so, be, it becomes easier, but then somebody like Hillary Clinton steps up. To, to take on power, and people distrust her motives. It, who is she taking care of? Is she taking care of the whole, or is she taking care of well, just Well, that's the, the American wrong? political system. Let's remove it from America and have someone like Benazir Bhutto, perhaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or Golda Meir, you know, yeah. uh, wildly different in their politics, but both very successful uh, leaders uh, in their, tragically, in the case of Benazir Bhutto, cut short, but, you know... And thank God we can transcend it, and thank God it happens, but it is rare. It is rare. Well, yes, it is and rare. So, and so, for me, Hatshepsut is a resource. So she's somebody, she's a badass who did it and saw the obstacles in her path and managed to transcend them and do what she needed to do to get to that, to that place, to that pinnacle for a woman of power. Then, for a woman then to become successful in politics, uh, whether it be in ancient Egypt or uh, the modern United States, must she then deny her, some form of femininity? Must she claim some kind of testosterone-type ambition for herself? I don't know. I mean, Hatshepsut had to, but for her it was very specific because she was ruling with a co-king and she was ruling with a young man who was getting older. And when he became a man, mm -hmm. she's the senior king. You're gonna have a woman tell a man what to do. That's untenable. That's not something that people Happens do. in my house all the time. <laughs> in your house, yeah. in your house, but not in public, not in front of other people. Oh, so for okay. her as a mm -hmm. woman to tell, yeah. okay, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah. And I like to run things the same, but right. that's just, that's all. But, but for her to then tell this co-king, this junior king, as a woman, right. what to do and to hold the senior position was problematic. So that's when she started to depict herself as a man. Do you, I mean, I, I'm trying to think, you know, putting it into a modern context for myself, I grew up in the era of Margaret Thatcher in, in Britain, yeah. who was extremely unpopular uh, for her politics, but I don't say, you know, with certain people, and of course extremely popular with other people for her politics, but I... The, I'm not the, a fan. So. Uh, well, you know, the thing is, the whether you are or you're not, and I don't know anything about the politics of Hatshepsut, but um, whether or not you're a fan, it didn't seem to be... Yeah, I certainly, I can't remember it being because she was a woman. It was because of her politics that she was a polarizing figure. Uh, even Sarah Palin, I don't think, who was a very polarizing figure during the, the McCain campaign, I don't think it was because she was a woman. I think it was because some people uh, were uh, very aggressively for her and some were very aggressively against her. But I don't think it was uh, femininity. Yeah, but, but how many people talk about what Sarah Palin's wearing, what Margaret Thatcher was wearing? That is true. That is absolutely true. Yes. The amount of, of press swirling around Sarah Palin and her outfits and her shopping and what she was doing yes. with children or not, those are not the kinds of things that would Tract, uh, well, I think that's true. But I, th I think that that's. I think women are as guilty as that uh, uh, as men, though. Or don't you think? Well, I mean, I'm wearing my black dress, so here it's I. It's very am. nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Oh gosh, it's nice to talk to you again. I haven't talked to you in such oh, yeah. a long time. It's been a while. It's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> But this is very good and very interesting. And, and the fact that you're, it's not fictional, but it's imagined, right? I'm trying to, to tell it with as much life as I can. So there is, there is conjecture in here. Right. It's not meant to be dry. It's not meant to be academic. Um, it, it, it counts for nothing at my university. I mean, this is meant to be fun for me to really tell a story as... Yeah, I mean, but I'm you write a book, it goes in, this, this is in the Smithsonian with all your other work. It, it goes oh, there. Okay. This is part of the body of work. So in years to come, when they're looking at, you know, well, yeah, Dr. Yeah, yeah, Cooney's no. research into, you know, Egyptian burial rituals, oh, wait, what's this? <gasps> a pot boiler with a picture of a map? Come on! <laughs> you know. yeah. Um, but no, if I can resurrect her, use her as a resource, dig up somebody from 3,500 years ago, I mean, that's a privilege. It's, it's, it's great. You're very good at it. You're a very, very clever woman. You, you never cease to impress me and engage me. I'm delighted to see you again. Dr. Karakuni, everybody. <laughs>